Hey guys, in today's episode, we're talking about Darcy Parish, the 610k midfielder from Essendon. Darcy Parish, he's always, <laughs> I don't know. You hear about Zach Merritt and Zach Merritt's the great player. I feel like Darcy Parish is kind of underrated. What do you reckon? I agree. Uh, but I can also understand where people come from when they say, oh, high accumulator, low impact. Mm -hmm. Look, they, they have a bit of a point, especially in some games where, when that happens. But I, I do think this guy is underrated. Uh, he's got a contract year. This is a contract year. He comes, uh, you know, free free agent at the end of the year. Oh, it's a bit nerve-wracking. What's going to happen? I'd love him to stay, personally. Um, but you never mm -hmm. know. So I know a there's a few. I know there's a few clubs that are probably looking at him and looking at this year, this year, and being like, "Hey, do we want another 35 accumulator player in our team?" Um, wait and see. See what kind of Essendon. The only problem is Dodo, man. He's so hard to deal with at the trade table. It's not like, yep, first round pick, Lockie Neal style, it gets done, no worries. You know, Dodo is going to be like, "I want five players. Your next picks. I want all your sponsors. Give me a free car." You know some money under the table. We want to own all your pokies for the next two years. Like, it's really hard to deal with this guy outside of like, okay, free agency, that's it. I love him. I love Dodo. He's, he's such a, he's he's such a character. Uh, and he loves the spotlight. He loves to be in there. He loves to strut in the media attention. It's great to watch. Um, it's, it, it's a bit of a circus. Uh, and Essendon, Essendon has been a bit of a circus for a while. I think... Last, you know, last trade period, last off season, it was definitely a lot more subdued. I think yeah. that's probably got to do with the fact that he's now dealing with someone like Scott, who's very professional, mm -hmm. very driven, very focused. I think it's going to help. I think it's also going to help Dodoro as well. So, in terms of what we can get out of him, personally, obviously, priority is for him to stay. Hopefully, people will be like, "Oh no, it's Dodoro. Let's not bother trying to get Parish. We're going to have a headache trying to acquire him." That could be a good thing for us. Uh, it means we get to keep a guy who is capable of finding the ball like nobody's business. Mm. The guy's priced at 111, and this was his. He's coming off his second season, averaging over 110 in a row. So this guy, I think, is well and truly building a body of work and consistency. And for a period of time, especially last year before he got injured, he was like on track to be M1. Like he was in contention for M1. The guy is well and truly capable of finding the football. Yeah, I know. I was definitely worried for a period there, obviously before the injury, about not having this player in who somehow was popping out consecutive, you know, 130 plus games in a row. It's like, man, I really wish I had this player because sometimes you just don't want to miss out. Um, that injury, no one wishes an injury on you, but... You know, for the non-owners, it was kind of a saving grace there, I think. Yeah, I was one of those players that didn't own him, uh, one of those super coaches that didn't own him. And um, look, it was great to watch him, especially after Anzac Day. Like, he he just, something clicked in him. And from Anzac Day onwards, the guy was an entirely different specimen. He was finding the ball, and he was, and the, part of the reason why he's so good is because he, he's, he's a one-two player. He'll win yeah. the ball, the contested possession. He'll shoot a handball out to Merritt. Merritt will get it back to him. And he'll, you know, they these two acquiring possessions, they almost broke the record for the number of possessions that this duo mm. got together in a single game. Like they feed each other so much. Um, and he had massive scores of 142 and 139 and 133 and six massive, six monster scores over 120. And then another six scores between 100 and 120. So, and then he had two scores in the 90s. So this guy really, for most of the year, for over half of three quarters of the year, he's he scored over 100. Uh, and, you know, he, there was a game that he was subbed out because of a calf complaint and that was mm -hmm. uh, against Carlton. So that also mm -hmm. limited his scoring in that game. But this guy, I think for 610,000, that is value, I reckon. I think he is up there with the likes of Steel, for example, who are those real, Steel and Crips who are great, uh, great value propositions for their price. Yeah. I'm just looking at his stats now, and boy, oh boy, he's got a few games there with 40 odd possessions. And unlike your Tom Mitchell, who got 40 odd possessions and 100, he's off getting 120s, 130s, 140s. Um, 
The only real negative for him, and we've spoken about it before, is the handball to kick ratio. But I think, mm-hmm. like you're saying, you know, he's that player who will hand it off, run, and then keep going with the ball. So there's not as much opportunity there to actually get those kicks versus kind of handballs and, and offloading it there. Um, you've spoken about his scoring and things like that, but I guess with these type of players, the high accumulators, there's always a, a bit of speculation and, and worry, I guess is the right word, of what happens under Brad Scott? Does he come in and Brad Scott says, yep, we're playing Collingwood style where we just get the ball and shoot it forward and we go for a mark? You know, do we try and do a Richmond where we run the ball up and down the wings and that kind of thing? Do these kind of ha- – have you heard anything about that, Joe? And do you think that kind of game style might affect Parrish's ability to actually get the ball and score super coach points? I'm not sure – I think there's going to be a, a there's a heavy emphasis on transition football, being able to transition mm-hmm. the ball really well. Um, so there will, you know, but at the same time, there's also if that option's not available, test the defense by switching the play. He could receive a mark in the middle and then switch it again. Um, he's someone that unlike a lot of other players in the team, he's someone who's capable of of hitting that 45 degree kick. And very often when we play our best football, it's because players like him are actually executing that kick towards the middle of the ground. And mm. I think in having more of a kicking game style that we're going to have under Scott this year, we're going to be able to maintain our structural, you know, our defensive structure a lot better. So players like your Ridleys and your Redmonds will be able to intercept, I think, and launch scores and launch, you know, quick, you know, rebound scoring, I think, that way. Uh, in terms of how that will play out for a guy like Parrish, I guess only time will tell. Um, he is a workhorse, though. He is. He might not have the most pace. He's not the fastest of players, but he is someone capable of running and running all day long. He has shown yeah. that a lot of the reason why he was able to generate so many disposals is because he's able to run to all and be in all of these stoppages uh, and really get that in and under ball and get it out. So... Whether or not it's going to play in his favor is something only time will tell, something that I'm really going to be watching keenly. Uh, but from what I can tell, especially in the latest match sims, he has really come back uh, and is in ripping form, and he's really dominant. Him and Shield, I think, are the yeah. two big, big performers in that midfield for us. Yeah, kind of like he merits your pinpoint accuracy, kind of your, your Josh Kelly type, whereas he's kind of a bit more Canelio. I guess maybe a good way to look at it that way. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting conundrum to kind of go for it. As you've said, you know, they've come back dominant. He has had a little bit of a delay to the preseason. I think there was some calf complaints as well. So it's something mm-hmm. to watch there. Um, but for me personally, kind of we'll go into if he's going to be in our teams or not. He's not someone that I've really considered. I guess kind of there's other options like we spoke about Crips just before um, who are a similar price with, you'd almost argue better output and less worry about the positioning and things like that. So for me, he's not a pick, but definitely a a watch and see. And if I'm forced to bring him in, you'd hope maybe he drops a stinker score, drops in price at some point, grab him up pretty cheap. What about you, Joe? Yeah, I am struggling. I'd love to have him in my starting team. It's just structure-wise... Mm. Uh, I'm not sure where I can take someone out to put him in, especially when you've got some people that you're fairly set on playing on field, like your Phillips and your Ashcrofts, your Hoppers, your Sheeds. You know, yeah. uh, I've tempted, I've been tempted a bit like whether or not I take out Sheeds so I can field Parish because I think for his price, he is that good. You know, and and I'm fairly light in the midfield in terms of the primos. I've only got four primo mids, and if I wanted to add a fifth. Personally, I think Parrish will be my fifth one. Uh, and he's also a bit of a pod as well. Not too many people have him in the team. And we've got a great starting fixture uh, mm. for a midfielder, especially. He could he could be a great you know captaincy option in round one against Hawthorne, against that really young midfield. And he has had a sensational connection with Draper this year, this, this offseason. He's just, Draper is just finding him at will and hitting him on the chest. So for people who are, who are interested in picking Draper, He's got. He's gonna. He might get a few hit outs to advantages uh, this year as well. Even more so to raise that score. I am. He's a wait and he's a watch and see for me. If I'm. If I love what I see in the in the pracky games, 
and Sheed doesn't tick all my boxes, mm. I might tinker with my team a bit more to get him in there at, at my M5. Yeah, I think if he was like 50k cheaper, he'd be a lock for me, but otherwise, wait and see, like you're saying. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, that's our, our review of Darcy Parish. If you liked it, remember, like, share, and subscribe and tell your friends. We've also got some competitions coming out, our group competition, where you guys can win some amazing prizes. And we'll put down the information for that in the description. Any last words, Joe? Uh, stay tuned, guys. We, we're pumping out a lot of content, and you don't really, you really don't want to miss it. I think this channel is only going to grow even more from here on out. So mm. please join us for the ride, guys. We'd really appreciate it. Remember, guys, here at the Centre Bounce, we do the hard work so you don't have to. Bye for now.